So when I see this, I get very excited. If I had to choose one iconic Thai street food dish to eat for the rest of my life, it would be this one. And this is a tough one to master at home, my friends. There's that glass shattering batter-like crispiness to the chicken. There's the broth and of course, there's the rice. Let's do it, my friends. Let's make Khao Man Gai Tart. Is this like your... It's pretty scary. Yeah, yeah. okay. Dax is scared of the cleaver. Okay, so the broth might seem like just a little addition at the end, but actually it's the source of a lot of flavour for this entire dish. So let's give it a go first of all. The broth is going to start off with some chicken wings. Now take them and just halve them through the joint. Doing that will allow more of the flavour and gelatinous kind of textural goodness to come out of those wings when it's in the broth. Now let's go in with the aromatics. So I'm starting off here with a rather large daikon radish. You probably only need half of this one. If you can't get a daikon radish then you could also use a turnip. It'll still give you that same kind of like vegetal flavour background in your broth. Pop that in with your chicken. I also want some lovely ginger slices here and now we're going to go with some spring onion. Again we want to slice through the spring onion to get that flavour releasing in the quickest possible time, white pepper and some salt. Top that up with water and bring that to a boil. Now here is the first of the many technical details in this video. One, I want you to take all of that scum off the top using a strainer or a spider. That way we're taking off the scum but we're leaving behind all the lovely juicy chicken fat. Once you've removed everything that you can, just turn the heat down and let that broth bubble away for 30 minutes. Now you can see we have a beautifully flavoured broth and look at that lovely oil sheen on the top. We're going to use that, my friends, that is pure flavour. So scoop that off the top and pop that into a wok. And now let's get started on the rice. The additional flavorings I need for the rice are some coriander and I'm just going to use the root end because it has loads of flavor but to me it's like less of an intense coriander flavor than the leaves when they're fresh so if you have a non-coriander person in your life they might still like this rice. The key though is that you need to crush it up. I also need some garlic and some ginger. Turn the heat on and just let that garlic and ginger kind of do its thing in there. When the garlic's nice and soft, now you can add in your rice. I'm using jasmine rice. Pour it in and then make sure it's kind of like sizzling away in that chicken fat. And I want each of those grains beautifully colored. Give this like a minute or two. Now the rice can go into my rice cooker pot. Now take two cups of liquid from your broth. Another reason why the broth is so important. Then pop that into your rice cooker and let it cook. Now of course the chicken and the chicken rice is really important and I spent so long trying to figure out how the street vendors do it where the chicken's like all crispy and the batter is amazing and ah, so the batter itself is a mixture of plain flour, rice flour, corn flour, white pepper, garlic powder and baking soda. This is going to help us get a really light crispy texture and now whisk all of that together, add some water, keep whisking until you get a really smooth batter. To coat the chicken, start off with your chicken thighs. I like to use kind of smaller thighs here so they cook quicker. Coat them in some flour, then into your batter and then into your hot oil. The perfect sizzle. It's just what I want. Can fit about three in here I think. Cook the chicken in the hot oil until it's beautifully golden. Flip it over every so often. I think about eight to 10 minutes for this size of chicken thigh is really what you want here. Pull them out of the oil, drain them on a baking rack, sprinkle with some salt, and then set them aside while you get your plate ready. First of all, the rice. Now have a look in here because this is one of the magic moments for this recipe. The rice is beautifully separate. It's not sticky or gloggy. And then look at that shine each grain beautifully coated in that lovely flavor. And in true street vendor style, I'm gonna unmold it onto my plate. You also need some sauce here. Now the sauce is really important because in Thailand, we don't just use any old sweet chili sauce for this kind of chicken. We use the sweet chili sauce for chicken, not just with sweet chili sauce, but a particular sweet chili sauce that's made just for chicken. It should say sweet chili sauce for chicken right here. Now let's get back to the chicken because this is what we're all here for. I mean, just have a listen to this crunch, please. Ah, oh, 
It's so satisfying. Ha, look at that. Chicken onto the rice. Add your decorative cucumber. Look, it doesn't have to be decorative, but I think it's kind of cute. Then you just serve it with your broth. I put a little coriander in there as well. And that, my friends, is Thai fried chicken and rice. Come on, guy ta, just a thing of beauty. Okay, so this is the deal. You gotta get some of the sauce and the rice. The chicken is beautifully juicy. The crunch on the outside is perfect. The flavor of the rice is so intensely beautiful with the garlic and the ginger. Everything is just spectacular. Mm. Yum.